Everybody, T.C. Bradley, host of God Made Millionaire TV, the hottest show on television. And I've been waiting all week for you, yes you, to stop on by and watch our show. And what a show we've got lined up for you. On set right now, we've got Catherine M. White. Catherine is the CEO of Accelerated Results 365 and the author of Beyond Breaking Even, Your Toolbox to Building Exponential Profits. She's an incredible leader, and she's waiting for us on set right now. So without any further ado, let's crack open the vault, and let's get our show started. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you, TC. It's such a pleasure to be here today. Well, you've come quite a distance to come to our studios today. I have. That's what it means for me to be here. Right. Where are you from? The Seattle, Washington area. Right. And we film here in Atlanta, Georgia, the ATL. Welcome to the <laughs> ATL. Thank you. I love it here. It's beautiful. It's. I was out here several years ago and loved it. So I was really excited for the opportunity to be back. Catherine, I'm honored that you have chosen to come on our show to share with our audience today uh, a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, give the audience a little bit of insights of who you are. Well, I am a single mother of four children. I live in the Seattle, Washington area. I grew up with a family of eight children. We were lived very poorly. As a matter of fact, there were times in my life as a young child when we did not have any running water or electricity. And if you can imagine taking yourself back to the age of nine years old, and it's in the middle of the night, and you need to get up and use the restroom, and the restroom that you have to use is something that's about one to 200 feet from the door of your home. As a nine-year-old child, you get up in the middle of the night, grab your flashlight to walk out into the dark with the moon shining above you, and you're walking down this dirt path, narrow dirt path, to this old dilapidated outhouse. Now, I don't know if a lot of people watching know what an outhouse is. Today, we have things like honey buckets. Um, we see those oftentimes at large events and gatherings. That is actually luxurious to the bathroom that I used. I was literally at this young age I'd step into this and be afraid that it was going to collapse or that I would fall through it. So that, that was a little bit about my childhood. How many uh, siblings do you have? I have seven birth siblings. Seven birth siblings. And so you're like the older sister, is that? I have two older brothers and then I'm the oldest girl. Right, so you're the oldest girl and, and you've sort of championed, you're sort of like the go-to person for your brothers and sisters, aren't you, in your life? I am in a lot of ways, especially for my younger siblings. When I was 10 years old, my parents separated and ended up divorcing. My mother decided to go back to college with eight young children, and I became a second mother to my younger siblings. Right, right, which so often happens in our society. Catherine, let me ask you some questions, if you don't mind. I appreciate your honesty in sharing that. God has raised you up from that environment to a very successful businesswoman in your own right, so congratulations Thank on you. that. But I wanna go back to the nine-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. I wanna talk about that little girl for a moment, if you don't mind. When you were in that abject poverty, did that nine-year-old little girl, did she still have dreams? Absolutely. I don't remember having big dreams as far as being successful, but I dreamed about being a princess and I would sing and I would make up these songs about just dr thinking ahead of what I wanted to be and being this beautiful, beautiful girl that had everything she wanted. Right. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Did you know you were poor? I did know that I was poor, but I wouldn't really say that I 
I realized the extent of it at that time. I knew that our family was different. I knew that we didn't have things that other people had. I knew that the clothing that I wore was different. And going to school, I knew that I was at risk of being made fun of because I had, I was wearing something that was far outdated and different than everybody else. But at the same time, I, I looked at the good in things and I, I made things enjoyable. Like I didn't focus on how different I was, even though I knew that I was. And right. I focused more on reaching out to others and helping others. Right. At what point did you transition into the business world? How did that happen? When I was 10 years old and my parents had separated and we were living on welfare. Again, my mother had eight young children. She was pregnant with number eight when she left my dad. And so we were on welfare and she had some friends that would occasionally invite her over to do some house cleaning. And I got to tag along and make a little bit of money for myself. And I started to realize how exciting it was to earn my own money. And then I later on at the age of 12, I couldn't wait to turn 12 because it was like this magical age. When you turn 12, you're old enough to babysit. And so I, I started creating these, at that time my mother was in college, we lived in student housing, and I created these ads that I would post up around the neighborhood and I started huh. taking on babysitting jobs. Wow. And then from there, I ended up, um, so I was 13 by this time, my sister who was 11 was asked to take on a paper route. And it was a huge paper route that normally you would, the original person drove to deliver these newspapers. It was seven days a week, early morning. And it was, she wanted to do it, but it was too large for her. So I decided to jump in and do it with her. We split the route and we walked it. We walked it seven days a week, 4.30 in the morning before going to school every morning. Literally uphill in the snow, no joke. <laughs> right, 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 right. Now, what did you do with the proceeds of your money that you made babysitting and with the your paper route? Well, I used it to buy the things that I wanted to do. I used it to buy clothing that I actually wanted to wear that I felt good in. And I also used it to do things with my siblings. One of my favorite memories is I took my siblings out to the county fair. And by that time I had my driver's license, I drove them there, I paid for their entrance, I paid for their wristbands to go on all the rides, and I paid for their food. What a wonderful memory that is. What a wonderful memory that is. Let me ask you, during that hard time that you were going through, and that's hard times, right? That is hard times. Tell me a little bit about your faith during that. Uh, what uh, factor did your faith play? Or did you, were you going to church? Did you, when did that come into play for you? Well, fortunately, I was brought up in a home where we did go to church every Sunday. I was brought up with understanding the power of prayer and understanding the power of leaning on God. I would have to say at that time in my life, I was like a lot of teenagers, I felt that being in that space, it set me apart from other people, it made me different. And so I rebelled a little bit in my teen years around that. Right, right. Talk a little bit about your, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. How often does that nine-year little girl uh, come back into your life? I don't really go back to that space too often, really. The, the part of my life as a childhood that I go back to most often is when I was 12 years old. Right. And, and I've actually written about this in a book that I had published a couple of years ago. And what happened at that point, that was the time when my mother decided to go back to college. We moved and I remember vividly I was at school for my very first day and I, I knew a couple of people. It was during our lunch um, on my first day of school and the couple of people that I knew had a different lunch period. So here I am thrown into this, this situation of 
of the unknown, not knowing anybody there. And I'm standing there watching all of these children my age. They're running around, they're, they're laughing, they're having fun. Um, obviously, they are seeing friends that they hadn't seen for the summer months, and they're excited to be back in school. And I stood there feeling very uncomfortable and very lonely. And as I'm watching this go on, I had this realization that I can stand here and be miserable, or I can do something about it, and I can go introduce myself, go meet another, some other people. And that is the decision that I ended up making, that I was going to go meet somebody. I walked up to this girl, I introduced myself, and next thing I know, she's got this swarm of friends around her. And that became my core friends during my junior high or middle school years. And what that moment did for me is it made me understand how, how incredible it is to be able to step outside of our comfort zone. And I learned that from that experience that I enjoy stepping out of my comfort zone. And so I intentionally put myself in situations where I can step out of my comfort zone. And that ended up being a very pivotal point of my life where I started to I started to blossom. I started to gain confidence. And the more confidence I gained, the more I began to attract people. And the more I attract people, the more confidence I grew. And it just went on and on. Wonderful. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. You have risen from the ashes of, of that situation. And now you're, you are an author. Is that correct? Correct. So let's talk a little bit about some of the, you know, the book that you've published. Sure. Well, my recent book is Beyond Breaking Even, Your Toolbox to Building Exponential Profits. I'm really excited about this because it is geared around helping business owners. In becoming an entrepreneur myself, I have watched so many business owners and the challenges that they face, the mistakes that they make, and I have this goal to make things easy, to help give other business owners and the ability to push themselves up, to grow themselves, and to be able to expand their businesses and reach their dreams. What this book does is I create a path to show business owners how to grow their business, whether they're just starting out right. or they've been in business for a while. And I give them tools and I simplify it. And what I've done is I have likened it growing a business to building a house. When somebody starts a business, it's usually because we have this, this dream, like right. we're talking about. We want to live into this dream. We want to do something that we're passionate about. So we go out and we start a business, but we don't really know how to do it. We don't know where to go. We don't know where to start. And a lot of people are just fumbling along, trying to learn as they go. In my book, I give you the tools to save you a lot of that fumbling along. Right, mm -hmm. right. This is a hot topic right now, right, Catherine? So many people at home are watching the show and they want to start their own business. They feel called by God to start their own business. Catherine, what is the biggest mistake that you see or mistakes that you see that people make when wanting to start their own business? The biggest mistake would be to not have a proper plan. Right. Now the biggest challenge is actually around your mindset. And I have people ask me that a lot. What is the biggest roadblock that people face in business? And that would be mindset because, and the reason I say that is because we can talk all day about not having the plan. We can talk all day about not having the right this or the right that or the right licenses or not having enough money, not having enough time, which is very common. I hear people talk about that a lot. However, if our mindset is in the right place and we have a belief that we can do it, then none of the other stuff matters because we'll find a way. Right, right. Yeah. So in your opinion, belief and your mindset is critical. Absolutely. How does one get the million dollar mindset? Here on this show, this is so appropriate. I, do, I believe that it really starts with our faith. It starts with our belief in God and, and the ability to be guided by Him. And how can we, how do we get to that point? 
attending church, doing our worship things like reading the Bible, having our praying. Our environment has an impact on our mindset. I break our environment down into two pieces. We have our external environment and we have our internal environment. Our mindset begins with our internal environment. What is it that we are putting into our minds? What are we feeding our minds? That's spiritually. What are we putting into our minds spiritually? What are we listening to? What, what is our self-talk? And we all have the, you call it the fat man on your shoulder, right? right? We all have that. We all have the negative self-talk that comes and, and that's normal. The question is, what do you do with that self-talk? What do you do with that fat man when he shows up on your shoulder? Tell him, get off. <laughs> right? All right. Get off there, fat man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Your external environment is how do you create what is around you and what do you allow to be around you? When you look around, I mean, your set here is beautiful. You want to create an environment that is conducive to success, that that will feed your mind. Right. Well, how do you do that, Catherine, if you're living in abject poverty, right? I mean, this is good stuff. This I, I love talking to you about this because <laughs> if anyone can answer this question, you can answer the question because you've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. But how does a person go from a, a, a place that they're at right now? You've got ladies sitting here watching the TV right now, and they're go, yes, I believe you, Catherine. And they're, they're, they're getting excited about this. But how does a person go from a poverty mindset into create a business that, and make your own money? How does a person do that, Catherine? That is a good question because, like you said, I came from that space, right? right? And what I did was I, I went into my mind internally and I envisioned what I had externally. So even though I didn't have that external environment necessarily at that time, I created it in my mind. Another thing that, that you can do is reach out to others. Um, find people who can lead you. Find people who you look up to, your mentors. Right. How important is it, Catherine, do you think the power of one decision to change a person's life? Do you believe that one decision can really alter the course of a person's life? Absolutely. And we make decisions all the time. I mean, all throughout our day, we make thousands. I think it's like 65,000 decisions, I believe it is, that we make every day. And any one of those decisions can drastically alter our life. Right. One, you're one decision away from changing your life forever. Would Absolutely. you agree with that? Absolutely. Catherine, tell me a, a little bit more about your coaching program, who you coach, who's your ideal clientele that you coach, and, and what do you do for people? Well, I work with anyone from an entrepreneur to a middle-sized business owner who has a team. Um, I love working with the teams because then I'm able to reach more people and encourage more people. And what I do with them is I, I start with first looking at where they're at right now. So essentially I do an analysis of their business and, and we look at where they're at right now, where they want to go, and then what are they doing to get there. And then I will provide them with the tools that will take them from here to there. Right, so who's your ideal client? My ideal client is somebody who is passionate about changing the world. My business, I designed it in a way to be able to change lives. And that is the type of person that I love to work with as well. There are a number of ways in which we can change the world through business, but the ultimate underlying theme is that they want to make a difference and that they want to change lives. All right, Catherine, so <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you believe business is a calling? Yes. Why do you believe that? Because I know for me it has been. Right, right. So it's been a calling for your life. Give me a secret to your success. How is it that you're able to go from where you've been, started out in abject poverty to a successful businesswoman? Tell me, there's people wanting to know at home, what, what is the secret of your success? What would you say? Well, 
I would say there, there are a number of things that's really difficult to pick one. The most important secret to my success, I would say, is being able to stop and listen for inspiration. My everything from the name of my business to the different programs that I develop, those have all come to me through a thought, um, which I believe is, has been guided by my Heavenly Father. Right, so you you pray before you make business decisions. I do pray. Right. I pray so that's, many times a day. Right, so <laughs> that is, and that's really from your childhood, you had said, right? That you right. developed this attitude of prayer, and now you've incorporated that into business, right? Absolutely. You know, I'm glad to hear you say that, because everything that you see here, the set, the, the name of the show, everything has been prayed on. I didn't make any decisions on this show that wasn't first brought through prayer. Everything's come out of prayer. I don't know how anyone conducts business today without prayer. Do you? I agree with you. Right. I, I think that it's a, just a mandatory thing. Now, listen, we're almost out of time for our show today, but I do want to give you an opportunity to speak to over 200 nations, something to inspire some hope. Maybe there's a little girl watching this show that's nine years old. Catherine, and she's right where you were, and she's watching this show. Maybe that little girl is now a grown-up lady, and but she's held on to that, anchored to that past that it's like a curse of poverty. And you have an opportunity, because of how God has raised you up in business, to speak a message of hope uh, to some people uh, on this show. So I want to give you an opportunity to speak into that camera to over 200 nations, whatever's on your heart. Well, TC, there's an acronym that I use in my business, and the acronym is POWER, only it's spelled with two R's. And just real quick, what that stands for is possibilities. So you have the possibilities to reach your dreams. O stands for outcome. Use your imagination and visualize that outcome that you want to achieve. W is for workable steps. Once you have the, work, the outcome, the next step is create the workable steps. And there are people in your life who can help you do that. E stands for empowering environment. And we talked about that, looking at your internal and external environment and creating that. And you have the ability to create that. It may not be ideal, but you have the ability to create an environment that will get you the the growth the personal development and the success that you desire are the first r stands for resources and there are resources all around us to be able to help us achieve those dreams those resources may be a person like tc bradley myself right <laughs> other people in your life and the last r stands for rewards and that's so critical and what i mean by that is as you are working towards your dream, make sure that you take time to stop and recognize your accomplishments and recognize the amazing person that you that you are and remember that you have the power. <laughs> All right. Miss Catherine, thank you so much. Will you come back and see me? I will. Thank you, TC. All right. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Can you believe we are at the end of another show? And what? a show we had lined up for you tonight. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I am acutely aware of the fact that there are so many of you that are watching our show each and every Sunday night that are going through some hard times. You're going through some economic challenges in your life. You're facing some things that you've never had to face in your life. And every Sunday night we try to be a beacon of hope in a world that needs hope and inspiration. And I've got tonight, as we wrap up our show, five words that will profoundly impact and change your life in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of this financial drama that you are going through. I want you to hold on to these five words. I was built for this. Unless you're T.C. Bradley, then you say, I was built for this sweet pea. But if you can find 
a moment in time where you can just say to yourself and say it out loud like you mean it, baby. I was built for this because you were. You were. You were chosen. You were appointed and anointed for the season that we find ourselves in. You've been through so much. You've been through so much already that you've come through and your God has brought you through. You were built for this, baby. You were built for this, baby. Don't you dare let anybody talk you off of your gifting, off of your anointing, off of your God-given assignment. You were built for this, baby. Don't you dare quit on your God. Don't you dare quit on your God. All right, I gotta get out of here. I'm all fired up right now. I gotta run off set, tackle something, or jump in the jacuzzi. I don't know, but before we wrap up our show, we always throw our shades on, and we hit our music, and we do our prosperity dance. You do the same this week, because you were built for this, baby. Big Mike, hit my music. Inside the heart of each and every one of us lies a dream, a purpose we were put here on this planet to fulfill, a God-given mission. And when we tap into it, God will unleash unbelievable blessings over our lives, from our family to our finances. T.C. Bradley's new book, God Made Millionaire, will help you bring the abundant riches of the kingdom to all aspects of your life. Order God Made Millionaire today. Hey everybody, T.C. Bradley, host of God Made Millionaire TV. And I was thinking the other day of how my life was profoundly impacted and changed for the better when I published my first book, Supernatural Success. Within 45 days of publishing that book, I signed a major TV deal to feature and promote my book on that TV show. After that, I published another book, got invited back to another TV show. If you're watching this video, listen, You've been given a God-given dream to publish a book. He's given you an assignment to do. And like me, you want to try to talk yourself out of it. I didn't talk myself out of it and my life was profoundly changed. I want to help you publish your book. If you've been given a God-given dream, an assignment to publish your book, well, we have a publishing company designed specifically from A to Z to handle all of those details for you. All you need to do right now at this point is set an appointment up with our publishing company so that we can talk to you about bringing your book to the marketplace and your voice to the nations on our show, God Made Millionaire TV, as a published author.